we're bringing a series of messages on Sunday nights doing uh, something different. I'm actually going to record these messages. I hope I can remember to do it because I don't want anybody to miss this. And we do have some members who, uh, for whatever reason, don't make it back on Sunday nights. And so I don't want to have them have any excuses. Well, I just wasn't there. I missed that message. It's going to be on YouTube. And I'll put it on Facebook. And feel free to share a link and copy it to these people that aren't here and don't come out on Sunday nights, okay? Because they need to hear these. But I've chosen to do this series on Sunday nights because this is a message for the church. And on Sunday mornings, we don't have, we have visitors. We have more people here than are just church members. And this is a um, message that is for saved people or a series that's for saved people specifically. But anyways, I'm going to bring a message on a topic that strikes dread in the heart of every believer. When they hear their pastor say we're going to preach on this topic, they react many different ways. One of the ways they react is they get upset. Preacher's done going to meddling. Preacher's sticking his nose where it don't belong. But that's not entirely true. Jesus or other, uh, the Bible says that we um, are to preach the whole counsel of God and this is part of the whole counsel of God. So there's one word which strikes dread in the heart of a believer. That word is this, stewardship. Mmm, stewardship. And I feel the main reason we fear this word, there's two reasons, okay? First of all, we assume that we know what it means. You know what that is? When you assume you know something, what something means before you really understand it, that's arrogance. So that's number one, we are afraid of the word because we assume we know what it means. And number two, we don't really know what it means. That's ignorance. So two enemies or two, two uh, things going against this, arrogance and ignorance. There's danger in assuming there is equal danger in ignorance. It's dangerous to fear or to dread something that we don't know very much about. Stewardship is often confused with tithing, giving money. Often confused with that. Now, can I just say something? That stewardship and tithing are connected. They're two words that go hand in hand. They are connected, but... Um, they have completely different meanings. There's more to it than, than just one or the other. Stewardship, uh, these words are connected, but they have different meanings. For instance, tithing is a part of stewardship, and we're going to talk about that. Prepare yourself for it. Um, but stewardship is much, much more than just tithing. You know, I didn't want to do a series just on tithing. I want to do a, a series on the entire um, teaching of being a good steward. So there is one characteristic, though, of being a good steward, which we cannot overlook, and that characteristic is faithfulness. If you're in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, look at the first two voices, uh, voices, the two voices. Look with me in, the, in 1 Corinthians, in the, two, the first two verses. Oh my gracious, it's been a long day. Verse number 1, let a man account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. That's verse 1. Paul says that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse number two. Moreover, it is required in, a, in stewards that a man be found... What's that word? Faithful. That a man be found faithful. So to be a good steward means to be faithful to, listen to this, all that God has given you. Everything that God has given you. Now when you think about it like that, let me ask you something. Does that just mean your tithe... No, it doesn't. That means everything. Okay? So to be a good steward, you must be faithful to all that God has given to you. I'll ask you, are you being a good steward? Are you being a good steward? So let's examine the meaning tonight. I just want to introduce this and examine the meaning of the word steward uh, this evening. First, let's pray. Father, would you help this morning, or this evening rather, as we look at this word, uh, would you help us, God, to get a good understanding of what this is? A proper understanding from the Bible of what it is to be a good steward. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. The first meaning of the word steward is this. It is a manager of an estate. That's Whenever you look at the word there in 1 Corinthians 4, and it's the word steward is used twice in verse 1 and then again in verse 2. The word, when you look it up, it means the manager of an estate. If you were just simply going to define the word, not try to explain it, but just define it. It means that to manage an estate. But if you'll turn to Luke chapter 16, and I apologize. I know that I said I don't like being a topical preacher, and I don't. I don't mind being a topical preacher. I just don't like preaching topically. Let me put it that way. But in Luke chapter number uh, 16, if I can find my place. 
Verse 1 says, And he said unto his disciples, There was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. So there was a rich man. You know what rich people do? Well, they're rich. You know how they got rich? They worked hard. You know how they stay rich? They have other people do the work for them. Alright, that's what they do. So a rich man had a steward, and this steward's responsibility was to take care or to manage the, uh, the affairs of the house. So uh, the word the steward means a manager of an estate, just like this unjust steward found in Luke 16. This man was responsible for all of his master's resources. Now I could stop right there, and we could start preaching or building a message on what it is to be a good steward. We are called to be stewards and we are to manage the resources of our master. All right? Now, when we stop and think about that, there are so many different avenues. Right now, my mind is literally bouncing off ideas of different topics and different ways that we could go with this message tonight. But I'm going to stick to the message and the outline that I have. We are responsible for our master's resources. You go home. I want you to go home at some point and take inventory of everything that you have. And then I want you to realize that you don't have anything. Everything you have was given to you by God. Well, you know what you might say? Well, I got a pretty nice car. God didn't give me that car. I worked for that car. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did you wake up and give yourself health to get up and go to work? Did you, uh, did you give yourself that job? Did you magically dream and poof out a job? No, you did not do that. God allowed you to have the health. He allowed the company that you work for to be hiring and allowed you to get into that, that position that you're in. God granted you all of those things. You don't have anything. It's all God's. So this uh, steward in Luke 16, guess what he did? He wasted everything that his master had. <laughs> he wasn't faithful. He wasn't a good steward, okay? The result of that was he lost his stewardship. We see this in Luke 16 if we were to read this whole passage. Let this be a warning to you that if you're not a faithful steward, you can and you will lose your stewardship. We have a cemetery in the back. I don't know everybody's buried out there, but I'll guarantee you that there are some people buried there that were Christians that were not good stewards. And the very reason why they're in that cemetery, they went to that grave prematurely because they weren't being good stewards of what God had given them. I have an uncle, I believe is a saved man, who is dead today and in heaven today because he wasn't a good steward of what God called him to and what God allowed him to have. So we need to be good stewards. By the way, stewardship is not the same thing as being in a relationship. So don't understand, when I say that you can lose your stewardship, that doesn't mean you can lose your salvation. Hey, God's not an Indian giver. He doesn't save you today and then, oops, you mess up tomorrow. I'm well, sorry, I'm going to take that salvation away from you. You weren't worthy. God knew you weren't worthy in the first place. That's the reason He sent Jesus to die in your place. And God granted you salvation through your faith in Him. Okay, so stewardship is not the same thing as relationship. You can lose your stewardship, but you can never lose your relationship. A relationship cannot be altered. I love my daughters to pieces. Do they upset me? Yes, they do. Do they make me angry? Yes, they do. Do they uh, disappoint me? Yes, they do. Do I disappoint them? Yes, I do. But you know what? They never stop being my daughters. That relationship cannot be altered. No, they can, no matter what they do, they will never stop being my daughters and I will never stop loving them. Our relationship cannot be altered, but our responsibilities can be. Stewardship is not the same thing as relationship. I just said that. Our relationships cannot be altered. Our responsibilities can be. And I said that already, but I'm just repeating myself here for a couple of reasons. Number one, my outline doesn't look like it did. <laughs> Number two, because I wanted to uh, really hammer that in. Anyways, I have a pastor friend. He has several children, several children. And I like his approach. He does not give his children an allowance. He doesn't do it. Now, his children do chores. They help out <coughs> in the house, and he pays them for working. He has older children, and he has younger children. The younger children, don't, they're not expected, and they don't do as much work as the older children do. Well, he tells them, he says, if you'll do this, 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 and this, I will pay you this for this, this for this, this for this, whatever. They earn their money. I like that. I think that's a good thing because kids today don't have a work ethic. They need to be taught this. By the way, that's taught at home. Don't send them to a job and expect them to learn a work ethic there. They learn it at home, okay? But anyway, uh, one day his kids went to their mother and they said, Mom, Dad's not paying us for doing our chores. 
She said, when he gets home, I want you to ask him why he's not paying you for doing your chores because he pays you. That's not on me. So dad comes home and they said, Dad, you've not paid us this week for doing our chores. You know what he said? He said, that's because you haven't done your chores this week. They, not, they weren't good stewards of what they were expected to do. He said, you're not fulfilling your responsibilities. Now, understand something. Their relationship was not altered, but their lack of faithfulness was not rewarded. They were not being good stewards at home. We are managers. So what do we take from this? We are managers of what God, who is our master, has given us. That's what we are to do with it. We are to, the word steward means to manage a household. Well, we are ambassadors for Christ. We are called to represent Him. And we are also called to manage everything that He's given us. And how do we do this? How do we manage this? This is a pretty big task, I know. And I hope to, by the time we get through with the sermon series, we have a good handle of this. But um, we are managers of what God has given us, and our responsibilities are different. Okay? Your responsibilities are different than mine. Mine are different than yours. Uh, but the expectation is the same. We are expected to be faithful to God in all that He has given us and all that He has called us to do. That's what God expects from us, to be faithful. Uh, we are all stewards in the service of God. If you're in 1 Corinthians, or if you're back in 1 Corinthians, uh, we'll leave Luke 16 for a moment, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, where we were just at, we see here that this is true of different groups, different people, okay? Uh, we are a call to be our preachers, or excuse me, we are all we're all in the stewards in the service of God, but this applies to everyone. It applies to preachers. 1 Corinthians 4 is dealing specifically with preachers, okay? Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Paul and his cohorts were going throughout the land and they were preaching the gospel. They were planting churches. They were leading people to Christ. They had the responsibility, the stewardship of the gospel, presenting the gospel and, and teaching them. That word, it's interesting, that word uh, ministers means under oarsmen. Under oarsmen. We don't have a clue what that is today. If I just say that, you're looking at me like, okay, that's what it means, that's great. But let me explain to you. You ever see these old Viking ships, these old movies, whatever, where they get the guy beating the drum, boom, 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 and they're rowing? That's what it is. We're rowing to God's rhythm. We're rowing in the direction that God is telling us to go, doing what God expects us to do. The word ministers means that they were servants under Christ, doing His work, doing His will, which was what? To deliver the Gospels. Maybe pastors, maybe evangelists, missionaries. Um, also could include uh, Sunday school teachers here. It also include personal witness, people that just share the Gospel, with a, their, their Gospel testimony with others. People that preach. By the way, the word preach doesn't mean pastor, doesn't mean missionary. It just means to tell somebody what happened, to be a witness. It's to speak forth what God did, to proclaim the good news. That's what it means. Um, but certainly preachers have a responsibility. But let's get more specific if we could. And I believe we can. I believe we will. Uh, Titus chapter 1 and verse number 7 says this, For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, no striker, not given to filthy lucre. Let's keep on going. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just, holy, temperate, holding fast the faithful word, as he hath been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. But a bishop must be blameless and the steward of God. Elders, bishops... Two words mean the same thing. Bishop, by the way, you know what that word means? It means overseer. That's what it means. Now, the Roman church has bishops. I believe Methodists have bishops. You'll see different, uh, like some charismatic churches that have apostles and bishops. Hogwash. They don't understand what it means. They don't understand what the words mean. And the word elders, you know what that means? Because that word is used in different places. But that word elder, you know what it means? It means a mature person. Mature person. You don't have to be a senior citizen to be an elder. You can be a mature person. But it relates to the need of spiritual maturity in church leadership. Now we're dealing specifically. The first one was people that preach the gospel in general. This one is dealing specifically with people in church leadership who deal with the gospel. By the way, uh, pastor, that word, you know what it means? It means shepherd. It refers to the role of feeding and protecting God's flock. 
Um, some people are confused. They see the they see the term pastor, they see the term chef or uh, bishop, they see the term elder, and they are mistaken in thinking that these are three separate offices in the church. No, they're not. They are actually three. Bishop and elder are actually two descriptions of the office of guess what, pastor. That's right. There are only two offices in the church. Biblically, pastor, deacon. That's it. All these titles describe the office and work of a pastor, not three separate officers. And by the way, it doesn't stop there. So we've got preachers in general, people that share the gospel, missionaries, Sunday school teachers, uh, VBS workers. You have a responsibility to share the gospel faithfully. Uh, pastors. Pastors have a responsibility to share the gospel faithfully. But if we can go on and be more specific yet, I think we can. Turn to 1 Peter 4, verse number 10. That's 2 Peter, Todd. 1 Peter 4, verse number 10. Peter said this, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So Paul was speaking of himself and probably Timothy or Luke, whoever was with him at the time. He says, We are ministers of God, stewards of the mysteries of God. And then uh, over in Titus, he mentions, If a man be a bishop, let him be the uh, steward of God. But Peter, excuse me, says this. What are the, look at verse number 10, 1 Peter 4. Read those three words with me. As every man. Who do you think we're talking about there? Us. Every believer is called to be a steward of God. We are to serve one another. We are to serve one another. You know, if anybody would have had any right to be served by anybody, it would have been Jesus Christ. He, was the, he spoke the world into existence. He had every right under the sun to come down here to sit down and demand that everybody serve Him. And guess what? He would have been justified in doing that. He would have been right. It would have been right to serve Him. What did He do? I think about the Last Supper. You know what He did? He put aside His garment and He wrapped a towel around Him and He washed the feet of the disciples. You know whose responsibility it was to wash the feet? It was the servant. Not just any servant, the lowest servant on the totem pole. Usually that was assigned to a servant who had done something wrong as punishment. Oh yeah? You think that's bad? You're going to wash everybody's feet when they come through the house. Jesus did that himself. He washed the feet of the disciples. So we think about this. Uh, we are to be stewards are to serve one another in the grace of God. We are to be stewards of the grace of God. Well, how do we do that? Well, we remember that God showed us grace whenever He saved us. We remember that God um, sent His Son to die in our place, and that was pretty gracious of Him. He didn't have to, but He did it anyway. So what do we do? We show grace to others. We show the love of God to others. It's as simple as that. Cost, look around you this evening. Look at somebody that was here this morning that's not here today, and I understand that... No. People work and they can't come back. I understand all that. I understand people have to go out of town. I understand people are sick. I understand all of those things. And God understands that too. That's not what I'm saying. But you know what? I'm not saying call them and get on to them. Well, you know what? You weren't at church last night because they might have gotten sick between church this morning and church this evening. So don't do that. But call them. Text them. Say, hey, missed you last night. Everything okay? Do you need anything? Just praying for you today. That's all you got to do. That's all we're required to do. So what does all this entail? Well, we are to manage all that God has given to us. Does this include our money? Yes, it does. But it also includes our time, and ta our talents, our testimony. I think that's the, usually the way it goes. When people talk about stewardship, tithes, time, talent, and testimony. Did I miss one? And I think that's the four that they usually preach on. That's great. But what about all of our resources? All of them. All of our resources. And we're going to uh, examine each and every avenue of stewardship, every one of them at least that I can think of. And if I miss something, you say, Preacher, you missed this one. Hey, just tell me. Maybe I haven't gotten to it yet. Maybe I forgot it. We'll do this again sometime because I think I'm going to have fun with this. But let me push you just a little bit further. We're not called simply to be managers of, of our resources, not to just simply manage them. There's another word uh, that's translated as steward. 
guardian. Matthew 20, verse 8. Luke 8, 3, the same word is translated. We'll go to Matthew 20 and verse number 8. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward, Call me the laborers, and give them all their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. Now that word is different. That word that's translated as steward does not mean manager of the household. It means guardian. The guardian of the vineyard. What do you think the guardian of the vineyard does? He protects that vineyard. Why is he going to protect it? Because it belongs to his master. Why does the master need to have it protect? Because it's, it's the master's. It needs to be protected. So we are called also to be guardians. Now listen, let me explain something to you about this. You can be a manager, okay? Or you can be a bad manager. That's up to you. you can, and we've all worked for people that were good managers, and we've all worked for people probably more than the good that were bad managers. You can manage your money well, or you can manage it poorly. You can manage your time well, or you can manage it poorly. The same is true for your testimony. You can live like a Christian, or you can live like the world. The same is true for your talents. You can use your talents. Listen, there's three ways you can use your talents. You can use your talents for God. You can use your talents for the world. Or you can not use them at all. I don't know which one's worse. Using them for the world or not using them at all. If God's given you a talent, you better use it for God. Amen. My dad can sing. My dad can play the guitar. And you know what he did with that talent? For the longest time, he played in a rock band. Back in the 70s, he's playing, he's playing that old uh, classic, what they call classic rock now. They just call it rock and roll back then. But anyways, he played that old music. He could play and he could sing and he was really, really talented. And he was also a mechanic. That's what he did for a living because all these people that want to start a band and get famous and make a bunch of money, they hardly ever do. Okay? But anyways, he was uh, working and he was uh, singing uh, in this band, whatever, and he was trying to get his life straightened out. He was going to church. He said one day he was working on a machine and whatever it was he was working on as he was tightening it down, the band busted on it, wrapped around, and guess what it did? It slashed right across the back of his hands. Cut down into the tendons. Had to go to the hospital. The doctor told him, he's like, Mr. Nance, you'll probably never have the full use of your hand back again. That's pretty bad for a mechanic, isn't it? It's ten times as bad for a musician. You know what my dad did right there on that table? After the doctor left, he said, Lord, I know why that happened. Because I haven't been using my talent for you. Lord, I'll make a deal with you. <laughs> I don't believe in making deals with the Lord, but... He said... If you'll give me the use of my hand back, I will never sing or play the world's music ever again. And for the longest time, he didn't. Play the world's music, that is. I don't think he is now either. <laughs> but he would go around different places and they would play and they would sing. You, Christian, are called to be a good steward. And that means being a guardian of all that God has given you. That means to be on alert. That means you're not to use what you have lightly. You know why? Because it's not yours. It's God's. You have it on loan. And that trickles down into every aspect of your life. Everything. Does that mean my tithe, how much money I give to the church? Yes, it does. Does that mean uh, you know, my church attendance? Yes, it does. It also, by the way, means your attendance at work. It also means your performance on the job. Also means how well you along with your co-workers. Also means uh, what you do at, at home in your private life. Then guess what? Nobody else in this room knows about that, but you know about that, and God knows about that, and some of us aren't good stewards with our private life. It also means what, how we behave ourselves in public. Now, I love to pick and cut up and have a good time. I think y'all know that about me by now. All right? But there comes a time when you have to say, I'm willing to stop cutting up in order to protect the testimony of my Lord and Savior. I ask you tonight, and we're going to examine this topic in the coming weeks, but I ask you tonight before we go home, are you being a good steward of what you have? If not, are you ready to start? Let's pray and go to the house. Father, I ask this evening that you would please help us to be mindful and be thinking about these things, what it is to be a 
good steward, what it is to be a manager of our household, a manager of your household, I should say, the manager of your resources that you've given to us. Help us to bear these truths in mind. Help us, God, to be willing to make any changes that the Holy Spirit of God makes in our hearts. Father, I ask that you would guide me through these messages and that you would guide us as a church as we seek to examine ourselves whether or not we really are being good stewards of all you've given us. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.